moment. And here we go. Wonderful versus Chomo Loco. Draft is going on. It's on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, their game is going to be. Actually. And we are currently waiting for the first ban from Chomo Loco. I, I have the fun job of changing all my stuff. We're going to get Jaina first banned out here. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Um... Oh yeah, I forgot to send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm a little behind, I can't see what's happening, but if you say Jaina has been banned, that's... Yeah, Jaina uh, was banned first not... by Chomo Loco, and Wondercall are going to ban out the Leoric, which means Chomo are, oh that's their nickname for this game, um, are going to be able to have their choice of either Zeratul or Uther or Johanna as their first pick. But whatever they don't pick up, as you said, you did just name three heroes, yeah. Wondercall are going to have the option of taking the other two. And so we do see that Zeratul picked up, that great melee assassin, uh, the Void Prison, heroic, able to do an amazing amounts of work, allowing you to set up for a fantastic team fight, or allowing you to disengage when you need to get out of there. Um, but they have left Wondercall with the option of taking both Uther and Johanna, and we do see the Johanna pick up straight away there. I mean, this is if I know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> it is <laughs> Stra strangely my, my draft uh, my draft predictions are, are quite on point today so I'm feeling in a good mood hopefully we'll <laughs> see the Uther picked out from one call although we may see the Kael'thas we didn't get the full on uh, we do get Uther in the end we didn't see the full on potential of Kael'thas after a level 13 power spike he gains in the, in the last game but one call are a team to demonstrate it if, if any here they are uh, wonderful, as we said, our powerhouse are coming from the last two weeks. Uh, completely undefeated. Nobody has taken a single game from them yet. Uh, wonder if they'll do a tempo storm and ride. Was it forty six to one to yeah, get to the forty six to one, uh, and then they lost. And finally. then they lost. Finally, to I was so happy. In an amazing Nine. final. I was oh. up to was it two a three a.m. our time. <laughs> so I can't even to... remember. I think it was two a.m. <laughs> I had to, had work the next day. I it was. That. It was. So, right. Chomo Lo, Co, are gonna, I don't know why I pause there, going to pick up the Kael'thas, so they almost have their full assassin lineup if they end up going with the three assassins, uh, which is very, very typical. But I think here we may see them pick up either the Zagara or maybe the Vala at this point. Zagara maybe. and Vala both very, very strong ranged assassins. Well, the, the fill the ranged assassin slot. They're actually going to pick up Muradin. As a tank first. I was going to say that, but they don't need to necessarily fear Wondercall picking up the Muradin. But I suppose it's a, it's a fear ban. It's a fear ban, basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a good it's a good choice to t uh, take it before it has a chance to go off the table in that second ban wave. Does mean Wondercall are going to have to try and guess out the last two positions here. We are missing a support from. Uh, Chomo Loco, so it is likely Wondercore are going to take one of those off the table, and we do see them take Rhaegar off the table there. Um, Wondercore's roster is completely open right now. Um, looking at what they've played previously, you could take out the Raynor or the Arthas to try and stop that double tank uh, push comp. Uh, instead, Chomo looking to take out the Zagara. As you, uh, as you even suggested last game, we could end up seeing Abathur's uh, Illidan on this map. Illidan is decent for Tomb of the Spider Queen. Abathur, not so much compared to Curse Hollow, as we saw the huge effectiveness of him last game. I think we're just much more likely to see uh, a couple ranged assassins and potentially uh, some form of huge lockdown for that Zeratul or even the Kael'thas. So I think a, a, a Tyrael or a Butcher... Or even a Kerrigan could work very well with, that, with this lineup, especially having the Divine Shield for, say, the Kerrigan. Yeah. Vala's going to be picked up, though. Super consistent ranged assassin. Can't really say so, much more than that. Yeah, a lot of right-click damage to put down there. Maybe not necessarily as much as Raynor would do in the long run, um, but we'll see. We'll see what they do with Vala. Uh, maybe they're just wanting a, a right-click assassin that can keep themselves a bit safer. Obviously, Vala having that escape, Reyna wouldn't, however. Reyna would just have to uh, either use his uh, his Inspire uh, and have taken the movement upgrade from it to, to try and reposition himself or just tank whatever damage is coming his way. Yeah. So, uh, and a Nazebo. So, uh, Nazebo, that ever-popular specialist who never seems to be out of favour. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's always been decent. There's been very few times where he's not been picked up after direct nerfs to either of his ultimates. But now both of them are perfectly viable. He sees a lot of play, along with Zagara, who really only has one ultimate, let's be honest. 
but she and the Zebo fill in that same role. They're very good at pushing, but they're both really good at providing long range poke damage and just overall cover damage against uh, against opponents from pretty safe locations. I'm going to put down a prediction now. I think that Nazebo is going to potentially take Gargantuan as opposed to Ravenous Spirit. Just Ravenous Spirit being that channel with a Muradin and a Kael'thas, uh, sorry, and a Kael'thas, a Muradin and a Zeratul who can both get behind that uh, tank line if they need to to interrupt the channel. I was going to say, uh, but don't forget, we do have Uther with Divine Shield. Now, Chomo Loco are actually going to pick up the Tyrael, um, which is a good pick. It basically forces Nazebo to take Gargantuan unless the Uther is on point by putting his Divine Shield, like, dedicating it to the Nazebo so that he cannot get interrupted if he does end up going for Ravenous. But I feel like you're probably right in this regards <laughs> that uh, one call of have, have been forced into a Gargantuan pick. She's uh, definitely interesting to see. Now, how are they going to round this out? Are they going to pick their off-tank that we often see Wonder Call run with? Uh, Two-tank comps being the ever-popular Hero League uh, mm. comp right now. Or uh, are you expecting a third assassin? I think Anubarak would be a phenomenal pickup here. And we actually get and it straight away. Go. Boom, done. <laughs> you are on uh, point. The, re- <laughs> the reason for that is you can web wrap out Malfurion, and that is no healing for the team. Tranquility actually gets completely disabled by web wrap. So, uh, by Cocoon, rather, is, is his ability. Like, uh, and so we could see Anubarak being the off-tank, not having to take up Locust Swarm, and instead taking up Cocoon, purely to completely shut down Malfurion and all the healing that he will put out. Yeah. So, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, right now, uh, I, I'm going to have to favour our, our boys in Wonder Call, as I've not seen Chamo Loco play. Um, and I, I've got to have faith in our, in our champions. How about yourself, Stefan? Who are you going to call? I think as far as draft goes, I, I see now, I, I really like the Uther pick just in general. I, I think he's a more consistently strong support over the Malfurion. But Chomoloko have Zeratul. They have the super big dive in of the Tyrael Judgment, of the Muradin Dwarf Toss, of the Zeratul Blink, and they have that background cover damage with the th- level 13 power spike coming out of Kael'thas. I think draft, purely based on draft, Chomo Loco might, might just clinch it for me. But unless they execute it perfectly, Wonder Call are, I think, going to gonna take this game. Okay. Will be interesting to see. Uh, I, I'm guessing they're just getting the lobby up and running now. They have. Um, and I'm going to be all... Picked out of the lobby. Oh. Excellent. That's always a good start. Yep. Um, and I will rejoin it. Moment. Uh. So when they put me in an observer slot. Uh. So, Tomb of the Spider Queen, for those who don't know, sorry, uh, sorry for a little bit of dead air there, is a. It's not the largest map, but this does tend to go on quite long. As the web weavers are dropped down, they're good at pushing, but they can be taken down quite easily with a little bit of focus, some rotations coming out. So, quite often we're going to see, um, and you are going to be able to spectate this game, which is, I think, good for us. Um, yeah, so quite often we see these games lasting. Longer than longer than I think the standard, but not super super long as we can see out of some cast on things like that. Now, the objective of Tomb of the Spider Queen, for those who don't know, for those who are maybe tuning in for the first time, the ranged archer room minions from all the other maps have been replaced with mechanical spiderlings. Now you want to destroy these, and they'll drop a gem. Every single spiderling drops a gem, and. Uh, also, killing enemy heroes, they drop three gems for you to pick up. You collect the gems and hand them in to one of two eggs that spawn on the map. And after your team has handed in 50, 55, 60, 65, etc., it increases in cost as you go along. After your team has handed in them, three web weavers, one in each lane, will spawn at where the, uh, your wave is currently at and help push buildings for you. And web weavers can be really key in the getting in the early game experience advantage, especially trying to get to that all important level ten. You get your heroic abilities before your opponent. You are looking good. Now, going into the tournament scene, 
Oh, that transition. I need to potentially change that <laughs> a little bit smoother. It just kind of clips there. It's fine. Hopefully I've got the teams set up correctly. If not, I have a lovely little swap button that I can just smack in. We have 10 out of 10 players ready. Good luck and uh, funnel. Going live. Let's go. Getting into this in this map now. So you, uh, you're going to stick with our champions. Are you going to? I'm going to stick Wonder with Call? champions. I, I, I'm a man of Wonder Call. I'm a, I've got Oasis playing in my head right now, replacing that W with the C. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sorry. I think it's, uh, I think it's, be a, a bit of an upset for Chomo Loco to beat out Wonder Call as you, they've won the last two weeks. They're a very strong, consistent team, and the drafts are very close. Put the draft, swap the drafts over for the teams, and I think Wonder Call have this game pretty much on lockdown. But with the drafts the way they are, the fact that I think Chomo Loco has a slightly better draft, if executed just as well, yeah. I think that this could be quite a close game, depending on how good Chomo Loco are. Yeah, no, I can definitely definitely see that there. So, do you want to uh, start with the introductions to Chomo Loco? Yeah, I'm just going to make sure I've got the things right. So Chomo Loco is the blue team. On the left, we're going to have Hainer playing the Kael'thas. We're going to have Six Pets TV, or Six Pets playing Tyrael. Stathis on the Malfurion, and Avoid on the Zeratul. And finally, Full Metal is going to be playing that Muradin down here. And our reigning champions over on the red team. We have Team Captain Tatze playing that Nubrak tank. We have Nick, not myself, on Vala. We have P. Flamwy, who I believe is a, uh, a stand-in this week, as opposed to their normal RQQ yes, not playing this week. Uh, so Uther is being played by P. Flamwy. Uh, Kryman is on his Johanna, and Nazebo is being played by Naxaft. Now, I love the little bit of uh, skin coordination here. We've got the pink Johanna skin coming out. Plus that Anubarak love hearts. Oh, <laughs> love it so much. Yeah. We, we were nicknaming Tatsy the love bug last week. So, uh... He's definitely the love bug. All, all our love goes out to Tatsy on that Anubarak. We'll see if he gets his cocoons off her perfectly, as I'm assuming that is the ultimate key taking. Now, a bit of a 4v5 going on the mid lane at the start, but Full Metal's going to transition down to the bottom to start circuit experience as the nazebo has been there the entire time. And it does look like both teams favouring this typical uh, strategy that we see appearing on at Ty Tomb of the Spider Queen, where instead of taking a lane two and two with one solo, they decide to move as a four, push that, that uh, creep wave forward as fast as they can, and then move back to the other lane before it has a chance to lose any of the minions. So they are getting two lanes of experience uh, as a four man rather than needing to split two and two, which makes it much harder for their opponents to push in, so they're forced to do the exact same strategy back. And it also call, uh, forces their opponents to not really be able to take any kills at this point. It puts it puts whoever, whichever team is doing it more efficiently in a good position. In fact, Kelsey is going to get called out here from a fantastic Burrow Charge yeah. coming out from Tatsu there. The Love Bug at work. Avoid not going to do much on his Zerg Hunter Zer at all. Fantastic yeah, it, it, forced, it makes there. it harder for uh, for your players to get ganked in a lane, unless yep. you split up a little bit like we just see Chomo Loco do. Yeah, so uh, just a little bit of a mispositioning there from them, and that does give the very slight uh, level advantage over to Wondercall. Just having a flick through the talents, nothing out of the ordinary for a level 1 talent that I can see. Uh, mostly the collection which you're going to see some mana addict from the chaos first personally i prefer the fell infusion that saved my butt more than a couple of times yeah, but I, I used to very much prefer a, uh, it, but now that arcane barrier is such a such almost a default pickup against a lot of true. things getting the really mana played. addict is a slightly more favorable <laughs> for me we're going to have a full-on hungering arrow build come out of vala we'll see whether or not she gets the vault refreshes hungering arrow at level seven yeah, I would guess so, with the siphoning and the uh, puncturing always, already being picked up there. How are we doing for uh, for gems, though? So, not we have many 20, out there. Uh, so, currently 30 uh, being taken in total for the side of Wondercall, and about 40 for Chandler. So no hand in there, or, well, 5 for the side of Wondercall. 5 in, so it's, it's Wondercall. Pretty, so equal. Yeah, just having a quick flick now, through some of the stats. Interestingly, yeah. with the double tank comp, we're going to see out of Wonder Calls Johanna, 
Um, eternal uh, Retaliation being picked up here, which lowers the cooldown of Condemn for each enemy affected up to a maximum of 10 targets. So it goes from, well, we're going to get a first blood down the bottom lane. Sorry, for, oh, sorry, second blood down the bottom lane. Sorry for missing that. On the Nazebo, the Muradin probably jump in and stunning, plus avoid Zeratul doing the damage. We saw um, with my camera work, and as it is, the Nazebo <laughs> already dropped quite low already, so getting picked off there, not a huge surprise. Yeah, normally we'll see like a... Um, uh, amplified healing come out of Johanna for level 4, but we're going to get the increased condemn cooldown effect, sorry, the reduced condemn cooldown reduction because of that double tank. Pat save plan. Yeah, I just wanted to keep the uh, keep people in and uh, keep that brawl going. Trying to try and maybe, maybe he's going to be trying to appeal that dive as uh, Choma Loco do have a lot of dive on their team. Um, those ranged assassins obviously going to be in threat from the, the uh, blink on the Tyrael and also the Muradin jump and the Zeratul dive obviously him, him also able to blink past the front line so Johanna then being able to pull them back off the off those ranged assassins so the ranged assassins can go to work uninterrupted now Wondercool have done a very smart thing here where they've actually swapped Nick on that Vala and the Zebo around which lanes are in because Vala actually has a vault um has a vault disengage, which we see how you's not able to save our life there as the Zeratul slows, plus the Tyrael comes in, dumping them down. But Nazebo doesn't actually have an escape, so swapping lanes with the Vala, putting the Nazebo with his team, is actually going to keep the whole the whole team safer. In, yeah, just probably a few less stacks from that death ritual, but probably better to not give away the experience otherwise. And uh, we do see that Chomoloko, with those kills, are now pulling themselves forward yeah, in they, the levels. They are missing one gem for full handing right now, and they are going to get it by the looks a void on the Zeratul just handing in the last gem that was needed. And Chomoloko have their first set of web weavers descending. Now in the meantime, so Kel'thas is going to get caught out in the top lane. We're going to have a small impale, and then a borough charge coming out from Tatel now Nubarak. Body blocked a lot by the Tyrael though, so falling quite low, to, down to just below half health, but the Condemn coming down, stunning up the Zeratul, going to do a lot of damage, avoid barely getting out with his Put themselves in a good position for where that Web Weaver will descend, able to take a big chunk of health out for it, before another one will start. Uh, the Zeratul is currently waiting for... Where is the Zeratul gone? He's I down apologize. the bottom, he's just he's harassing the Bala, Bala, Bala found him out with the Multishon. In fact, Nubarak's yeah. going to die... Interesting, I'm not sure how. I think I think the last hit from Tyrael Smite was just enough damage to pick him off as he turned Four around for an from impale the on his officer. The Tatsu falling down here. Wonderful are down in kills, three to one. So yeah, Wonderful down in kills and also those web weavers doing work, taking down the gates and the towers in the mid lane, uh, and Flamingly having to fight off the minions that are trying to push on to the top. So uh, just one web weaver left up. And it does go down at the end there. So we are back to some downtime laning, and we will see probably see the reset here. As uh, Cryman looks to hand in, should be enough to trigger his own web weavers, but Full Metal is not going to let him. Uh, Wonderful, are slightly behind on experience by about half a level here, probably uh, as a result of giving up those two kills, uh, the two kill difference rather. Yeah. And level seven, uh, obviously out for both teams. Being level nine, we're gonna I'm gonna just double check and go over the talents once level ten is reached. A little bit of an engagement happening here over this bottom hand. Huge Tatsu bar of charge coming out from Tatsu there on the Anubarak, jumping in. Maybe we can try and get an impale off on the avoid Zeratul. Gonna get stunned out here though. Uh, meantime, full metal on the Murdin dropping really really low. Vala not quite able to catch up uh, to him as a result of all the slows from those thunderclaps. So no one really falling, uh, no big abilities blown as they don't have those heroics yet, uh, and Wondercore are able to pick up those web weavers. Now the web weavers will be a little bit stronger, not a lot, but just a little bit stronger uh, due to the time difference and uh, the scaling that goes there. So we'll see if they can pick up any more than uh, than Chomo did, and whether they can pull that experience lead back through the web weavers. Choma and a few, they're going to have a judgement come off on the Johanna actually but she jumped inside Zeratul's void prism 
which was cancelled, but a little bit too late there. So that's a, that's two ultimates wasted. In fact, the Phoenix is going to go down as well. Not going to do much either. So we're going to have three ultimates wasted here for Chomoloko. Wonderful coming in, now hitting their level 10 with their ultimates. We're going to have Cocoon onto that my Fury straight away. He hadn't popped, uh, he had popped Tranquility, so we're going to see it end almost immediately after. But Tatsu going to get stunned out and have Living Bomb on him. Uh, gonna get Divine Shielded by the Uther to uh, able to stay alive. Meanwhile, the Muradin and the Malfurion have been picked off. That Tranquility getting burnt out entirely. Not being able to do any healing as that Cocoon was perfectly timed. It's a fantastic fight taken there by Wonderful. They are going to push in. They're going to take gonna those gates and experience. get powers down. They're going to push and, and do a lot of damage to this uh, mid lane. Yeah, and they do rotate up top, having spotted that Zeratul in bottom taking their Web Weavers, so they can push another fight and knowing that they will be Five versus four if the Chomo do decide to uh, engage back. But their web weaver will fall in top lane. They pull that level advantage back through the gates and the towers that uh, they've destroyed there. And they're going to be looking to march on to the fort as best they can uh, in the near future, I would guess. As uh, as predicted, we do have an Azevo take Gargantuan. Despite Divine Shield uh, being being on his side, it's just a safer pick because he's not going to get interrupted by the Tyrol's Judgment. So, uh, fantastic to see we called that one correct. The Void Prison coming out of Zeratul, as we would expect. A Judgment from Tyrael, Phoenix from Kael'thas, the Avatar from Muradin, and Tranquility from uh, Malfurion there. So all the heroics we would expect to be taken. The Cocoon, as we called, coming from Tatsy. Uh, you did see it in that point, doing some work. Tatsy often seems to favour that Cocoon. Um, does allow you to take somebody out of the fight for those few seconds, which is fantastic utility there. Um, not really surprised by any of the picks there. The Blessed Shield pick for the Johanna. Um, one... it's, it's very typical. It's a it's a huge three man stun that can definitely come out, and uh, and is going to be really really useful for locking down the Zeratul and the Kael'thas Stop them from escaping. The key the key targets of that. And we're going to have a bit of engagement up here in top. Johanna getting a good condemn off, doing some damage to the Zeratul, but going to get stunned out by the Muradin and Web Weavers handed in for. Trimaloka, actually. A top uh, Web Weaver taken out without it doing much work, allowing one call to rotate down and see if we will have a fight on the mid. We'll see if Tremo do descend to fight, decide to defend their thing. Yeah, Web Weaver, which... put down a bit of a zone, zoning amount of damage coming out of the Kael'thas in. Muradin, with his avatar popped, doing a lot of zoning with his positioning, really aggressive, soaking damage for his team. Takes a couple shots from the fort and is just going to back off. Yeah, so Nick the Web Weaver's out taken out with relatively little pressure put on them there. So Wondercore just dealing with those where Weavers very, very quickly. And they are now, in position. Level 13 for Wondercore. I want to sh point out the talents. We're going to have Shrink out of Uther, pretty typical. Icebot from the Zebo again, pretty typical. Occasion we'll see Sprint, but triple Spell Shield. Yeah, definitely Vala not wanting to spell shield there. <laughs> it's very good against against uh, Zeratul, who's a lot of his burst damage comes out of uh, Singularity Spike, but in fact we're going to have a Burrow Charge come out from the from Tatsay's Love Bug, going to catch out the Kael'thas, he is going to die, hold it, get stuck in Malfurion route, huge Cocoon coming out on the Malfurion, and he's going to die in the end, we're going to have Strafe coming out of the Vala, Muradin almost able to Dwarf Toss himself out, it actually goes on cooldown, but was stunned by Tatsay's Impale just before it got off, so not quite the unstoppable man the Muradin thought he was, and that's going to be Three for naught. Huge, Wally. huge team fight there. In While they did that, uh, that team fight there, we did see the web weavers coming out for Wonder Call. So as well as taking that bottom fort, uh, they are going to have a web weaver now push up to that second gate. We see uh, Wonder Call are going to rotate into the mid fort. Um, Tromo not really looking like they want to fight back. Maybe just try and stop a bit of damage if they can, but their fort they know will fall to Wonder Call. So instead. Uh, they are just going to see what they can make out of this bad situation for them. Now falling nearly a, le a hot entire level behind here. Yeah, I mean a level and a half almost at this point. Hellfast has though just hit the level 13 talents and everybody always talks about the power spike he, get, but he gets but Chain Bomb can do so much. The way to really make good use of it is to activate your traits, you get a free living bomb. Uh, you cast it on an opponent in the middle and then you immediately cast another living bomb on them. That straight away spreads the bomb and, and gets, that, gets that chain bomb going and do a huge amount of damage from just casting those two abilities and then getting the hell out of it. 
So but yeah, not really any way to stop that uh, chain bomb either. No, uh, no cleanse at the moment for them to be able to clear any of those that those dots. So if you have that chain bomb on you and you are low health, you are probably dead. Yes, definitely. Not that cleanse removes it. But it would remove the slow. Well, it does not, I apologize. Uh, no, it yeah, does not. It only removes slow roots and silences and stuns. You so if you took the slow yeah. back, so back draft talent at level 16, it would be the case. Rodin going to get caught out here a little bit. Popping his avatar and actually aggressively dwarf tossing himself in there. Fantastic positioning by him. Now Furious Tranquility comes off and a huge judgment lands on the Vala. But we're going to have Cocoon... Uh, on the murder instead of the tranquility up Malfurion, and that's just going to be a successful disengage out of Wonderful there. And uh, so two ultimates for for what looks like every single ultimate. So yeah, good uh, good disengage there. Definitely put themselves in a position they didn't really want to take that fight at that point. Uh, instead, they are looking to push with their siege giants that are currently pushing in the front lane. Yeah. Um, they just come around to the bruiser camp. He look, pokes in his head into the bruiser camp situation, but Johanna was waiting and. Gonna just able to walk himself out of that actually. Very, very good body blocks and stuns coming out from the Muradin and the Tyrion. So they are gonna instead take that bruiser camp and uh, get a little bit more pressure onto that bottom lane. But uh, Chomo not really wanting to let them take it without a fight. Yeah, no, definitely not. We're gonna have a, a full condemn build coming out of Johanna here and double blood for blood. On the side of one call, Anubarak being able to pick that up as well, so it's going to be very beneficial in keeping him alive since he's not the tankiest of the game. Uh, Big push coming yeah. down here with these siege giants, and going to be able to pick up this peak. Relatively uh, un un uh, unhindered from that, they're not going to yeah. punish they, the uh, just walk in, take the keep, and walk out. It's very objective based play. They're actually setting up a party push here. Muradin comes in with the uh, Zeratul, seeing what they can do, but Blessed Shield comes out, lands on Malfurion, and does a huge amount of work, Cocoon on Malfurion immediately. He's ice blocked himself to try and stay alive, it's not going to work. Tatsay just going to borrow charge himself out. Judgment now onto the Uther, seeing what damage they can do to him. Divine Shield is on cooldown for another 10 seconds, though, so not using this fight. Tyrrell's going to get picked up in the end. Health has very, very low. So a two for nothing, and a fort, uh, and a keep. Sorry, picked up there by uh, Wonderful, supporting themselves in a stronger and stronger position. Two and a half levels up now. They uh, will just be... go up straight to top to try and take this boss. Yeah, it does look like they're heading that way. Uh, by try, I mean succeed. I mean they they, they can't <laughs> really be contested at this point. Judgment was already used. Tranquility already used. Avatar used. Two two heroes of Ch Chomoloko are dead, and. Everybody, uh, and now Divine Shield and Strafe and even Cocoon. In fact, all the ultimates for Wonderful are almost back up. The only one we're waiting for now is Gargantuan, and that will be up. We're going to have Kael'thas caught out here. Good Burrow charge there. Pick him up, stun him out. Cocoon lands again on that Malfur, and he's going to get picked up off the end of this. Muradin taking a lot of damage there, not going to get picked up. They're not going to chase, not going to overextend, just going to pick up the Muradin and know that they've won that fight, and they can go back to taking this boss to push in that... So uh, putting themselves in a very strong position once again. I'll be interested to see whether they use this boss as a fire and forget boss and sign to pressure onto the mid lane, or whether they're going to push with it as it pushes across the top. Uh, doesn't look like there is. There are a lot of gems on their team as well, so they could go for the hand in, have the boss and the web weavers pushing together. Yeah, 86 um, gems in total for the side of Wonderful uh, held across all of their heroes. 44 on that, Johanna. You do see Johannas on this map often have a large, large, large supply. Especially of with the gems. condemn build. They're condemned, just able to take out an entire quick wave very, very quickly. Knight takes pawn. Uh, and that is going to be a successful hand in for Wonderful. So, uh, that boss being taught by all five members of uh, Chomo there, uh, which is going to leave the mid lane open, but Wonderful not going to push straight up instead going to push the wave now, interestingly uh, Zeratul opting for rending cleave instead of double bombs at 16 unusual pick there maybe he feels he's getting a few bit more in the AOE fights with Johanna pulling everybody together yeah uh, maybe he feels that he needs to one pull himself back out immediately otherwise he's going to get stunned and killed so that's definitely definitely could be a smart choice I'd like to see it work out for him uh, Wonderful they showing their dominance so far in this first game. Yeah. Wonderful just taking the gates with uh, not much there. They do get a Phoenix, which they can quite happily walk out of. 
just some little poke back and forth over while this web weaver gets slowly whittled away by Chomo Loco. Yeah, and we're actually going to have uh, the Muradin caught out there. A couple stuns plus the Johanna Condemn coming in, and that's going to be that's going to be that. The Blessed Shield and the Gargantuan coming out here. Um, Four one the call. They're actually, they're actually, like I said, they're five four in this fight. They're already one up, they're, which is going to push Chomo Loco back. They're going to be able to take a keep and probably this tower, and they're just going to back off. Tatsu going to borrow a charge himself out if he needs to, and Nick still has that vault on that far. Yeah, so uh, quite happy just taking what they need to move on and uh, not getting too greedy here, knowing that getting too greedy is probably what will lead to their downfall at this point. If they play the game slow and safe, then they should be able to just keep trolling with this lead, keep on trucking, guys. Uh, they do Very get their level... Based. Never overextending, not giving their opponents any chance of, of getting back into this game. Level 20 talents now out for Wonder Call, and they look pretty unstoppable at this point. They do, they're just gonna, they're pushing forward and looking to point, take a fight under the core by the looks of it, so they're just gonna push onto the core. Tromo not fully engaging back, oh, we do see a Void Prison come out. A fantastic Void Prison coming out, in fact, we're gonna have. Um, Nick get focused down really, really heavily. The judgment coming out from the Tyrrell, but Strafe's going to be active, activated. Going to get interrupted by Full Metal on his mouth here, and Tranquility coming out, and actually, Wondercall are not winning this fight. However, the core is only on 20%. With a bit of focus, they might just be able to take it down. Zeratul going to pick up the Zebo. Meanwhile, Malfurion doing really, really good job to block out the Johanna, but 1%! Kael'thas managed to stun up the Inubarak! Wow! 1%! Oh, yeah, hyperventilating there for oh, and zero percent. The uh, Uther with his redemption. Uther with redemption and snuck in to take the last attacks. <laughs> oh, oh, that I was didn't... such a shame. I thought Kirmaloka just kept themselves in it, um, but redemption coming out for the Uther, able to finish off the game at full. Johanna, interestingly, taking Storm Shield instead of Indestructible, so she herself didn't have. She did not. Uh, the second life may have won them the game at that point. Or the, maybe the uh, Storm Shield kept the damage dealers alive long enough to get that uh, so so very low. But the Uther, with that redemption, none of us saw it coming. And the core explodes. Good game, guys. 